Ladies and gentlemen, I am Thaddeus Shade. This is Seasonable Clout, and it is, we're inside of Well Season in Scottsdale, and I am sitting, Scottsdale, Arizona. I'm sitting up here with my friend and uh, a famous DJ, uh, DJ Freshmaker. I've known him for a very long time. Uh, Freshmaker, how are you doing, brother? I'm doing great, man. I am very, very proud of this production you got going on, brother. Oh, it's looking good, you, man. man. It's looking we, good. We trying. It looks a little wild. The chords on I mean, they, they place, ain't got it. They don't know. They, they don't. Yeah, they, I, don't know. I appreciate they, you, man. They, they I know, know you're into all of this, man. I know yeah, you're yeah, into yeah. to the streaming and to the. I know I've seen a lot of your videos that you yeah. uh, that you post and the, the music blends. You know what I'm saying? Talk, what's the latest music blend? You just oh, did one. We uh, we working on right now uh, a blend with uh, Quincy Jones and Four Bats. Um, date at eight, and uh, what's the name of that Quincy Jones song? What, whatever. Uh, I, don't, I was just uh, singing what you felt good to say. <laughs> but uh, Instagram keep blocking it because UMG uh yeah. took all that music off of social media. Blocked. Yeah, so ain't nothing going down right now. I, I don't, I don't feel safe about playing no music online yeah. really right now. So that really, yeah, yeah. I, none. Of, I, I, I review. I, I release. Uh, Back to the Future blends every week and they get blocked every week. Did you do the thing I showed you? Yes. And they was like, you ain't fooling us. Bullshit. I do it all the time. I did it for the four bats one. And I tried it twice. I even put sound effects in the beginning. Really? And they was like, (laughs) did you try a different song? Just like a completely different song, but turned it down? Uh, Yeah. Yeah. And you do the music where you turn it up just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. No. Really? I'll try it again this week. But, Damn. Yeah. yeah, man. If you have some trouble, let's talk about it. Let's try to figure that shit out, man. Okay. I'll I also see you. I, I'm not the wizard. <laughs> <laughs> I also see you be doing your your videos where you uh have uh one side is the the clip that you yeah, and yeah. you're also what, what is how did that start? What is that about? What do you do with that? Uh, on my page, I do a lot of talking about modern dating because it's rather fa- fascinating. You know, we mm-hmm. we come from you know the 80s and 90s days of uh you know classic R and B, so you expect one day when you grow up, you're going to get that kind of, you know, love and affection. And right. so when you get out here and you realize <laughs> too late, nigga, uh, <laughs> it's, 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 it's rather fascinating. So yeah. you just got to talk about it, you yeah. know? So what is something that's uh, sparked you recently as far as uh, dating? Is there something going on on social media that you've seen or any video clip that you've seen that's going on? That's got you like, Oh yeah, I got to talk about this. Or I did talk about this. Oh uh, man. It's, it's, it's recently I've seen a lot of, uh, you know, if you, if you make 50 K, you too broke to date kind of thing. Really? 50 K? 50 K. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, you can't, yeah. they can't date a 50 K, uh, a guy making 50 K a year. That's not, that's not something they going for right now. Yeah. yeah no, I mean, that that's what they saying. That's I don't believe it. What's, if, what's the response in your comments when, when the women get in there or the DMs that you may get about some of the stuff that you post. Are they agreeing with what the woman is saying? Are they disagreeing? Lately, I've gotten I've gotten a lot more agreeableness mm. in my yeah. comment section because I am uh I've toned down some things a little bit, but uh I don't know how long that's gonna last. Yeah. Uh but I've gotten a lot more agreeableness. Uh folks are, you know, they're like, you know, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. You sometimes you say something and you animate it and you're emotional about it and you like right. if you're broke, you better get with a nigga that got fifty thousand, <laughs> you know, and somebody get mad about it. But if right. you actually say, you know, did your last boyfriend make fifty thousand? Mm. Did the father of your children, you know? I like the way you brought it down. You gotta so. that's what they like. Mm, did you you got to you got to you mm. got to I was I was shown a video. Um the the, the, the young ladies out here too. <clears throat> Damn, my throat is killing me. Uh the young ladies out here too. I need to find oh, I need to ask my lady to send it to me. It was a video. Mm-hmm. Um they been you was asked to be on it, Davion. My boy GQ is the, Jones pop, the is red here. pop balloon balloon. The red pop, pop balloon. Woo! Yes. So did you see the one with the young lady was here? And she told dude because he was from Chicago. Yes, she, didn't, you she saw was that? in the club. Can I you got a video of her in the club. I do too. I saw her in the club like I two weeks ago. That's the most ridiculous shit I've yeah, ever seen, seen in my her. life. I seen her. Can you talk about that a little bit, please, man? Uh, yeah. Can you listen. describe that video? I'll put it in the vi- and when we get done cutting, I'll put it uh, in. I there. think a lot of times some of this stuff when folks get on camera, they become so not genuine. That's true. You know. Yeah. 
and they understand that things can go viral, so they want to do it too. Yeah. And it's like, so you actually cheat in the marketplace. You're not really in it mm. to find somebody. You just fucking around. Yeah. So you really need to like sit your ass down somewhere because you're being <laughs> a fraud right now. Yeah. That chick, you know, hey, I don't know her, yeah. young lady. You know, I, maybe you nice in the back. I don't know. Yeah. But she had the nerve to tell a young man, you know, he sounds like her little brother. Right. And she wants somebody with a better uh, vocabulary yep. in their day to day speak. Yeah. That's not even how you say the phrase. <laughs> <laughs> you would actually say, I would want somebody with maybe uh, more of a vernacular or something like that. Like, right. You, you, just, she was trying too hard. To dumb him down to make yeah. herself look this big. Is too good. I'm going over to, to, and, to uh, Instagram. Keep going. <laughs> she was she was she was trying too hard to make herself look big, and I, I got to give it up to the ladies. They got into the comments and they were like, "Listen, you got on a sheen dress and a bad ponytail." Did they really? Oh yeah, they was going in on her because they knew, you know. The brother was being real genuine. He was being cool. He wasn't being emotional in his response. Right. He was just like, "Listen, you know." This, this is the way I talk. I talk this way because I'm from where I'm from. Right. You're from the same place. I sound like your brother because he's from the same place. Right. We're just putting two and two together. Let's not be ridiculous. But in the clips that you see of the show, I don't know if that's the whole show, but in the clips that you see of the show, um, most of the clips that we're seeing, you it, see that a, a lot of these folks are not actually being serious about <clears throat> finding someone to date. They're being is, serious yeah. about being seen on camera. Right. Which is like, listen, hey, get your ass up out of right. here. These people, these these dudes looking for somebody to date. But um, in today's, I mean, and honestly, in today's society, though, like, uh, how do you find someone genuine when we all reach to the digital way? You know what I'm saying? But it's yeah. not an old school way of going to the mall or going yeah. to Target and, you know, or going to the Walmart or, and I'm about to go up there and get a number right now. I'm about to go and do my thing, man. I mean, it's all through, you know, everybody's got their shields up when you mm -hmm. get the messages in the DM or uh, from any uh, dating app. How do you find somebody? It's kind of crazy. Own? Like the more, the more technology we got, the further we away we got feels right? like that right it feels um, like that I, I'm not gonna act like I'm a <clears throat> expert or really got the answer no, I, I mean what I would think is that you just be more intentional about actually getting with somebody you right. know like if you do want to talk to them for real be intentional about you know calling them up on the phone right or being in their face one thing I actually like to watch is uh, it's a gentleman on TikTok by the name of Calvin. Okay. And he See, just, I like when you do this. You always put me on some shit. Go ahead. <laughs> he always just, put me on some shit. He just goes up to people in the grocery store and just start talking to them. Really? And a lot of times, sometimes he'll just put a wig on their head, yeah. you know, ask them if they like wigs or something. Right, like, right, just, right, right. Just being real personable. Right. And I think, you know, folks need to get more. I, I actually watch that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I can... uh be more confident just going up and talking to people just you whenever. You feel like you've lost that? You feel like you had it as a kid, right? Or as a teenager, you feel like you had that confidence? I feel like you, you lose a piece of it when you get so connected on the phone. Right. You're so used yeah. to doing stuff on the phone. Yeah. Um, like, sometimes I feel like, you know, if I call a woman too early, yeah. they might be like, oh, damn, nigga. <laughs> Text me for a week first. <laughs> You feel like the uh, phone call is gone now? Uh, no, no. I mean, not completely. I just, I just definitely feel like folks are kind of used to the text the message. Text game, yeah. But I think slowly but surely, folks are gonna get back into the more genuine phase of having fun and getting to know people because that's what's lost. You right. know, folks won't. What's the? What's the? They want Dwayne and Whitley. Oh yeah, different yeah, world. Folks yeah. definitely want that. Yeah, they won't Wayne we, can't, we can't say we can't say <clears throat> Dr. Huxtable and and, and 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 oh yeah, I'm and Mrs. Huxtable. I think we can't say that later on in life. But yeah, yeah listen, hey, goals, right? Shout, shout, <laughs> shout, shout out to Dr. Huxtable. <laughs> uh, shit, I don't believe what the white folks said about you. Yeah. Go ahead. Going on with the text, uh, me and uh, Visions, we were listening to Smartless. I don't know if you ever listened to the Smartless podcast. That's uh, Will Arnett, um, Jason Bateman, and what's the last one? 
Sean Hayes, and that's my guy from uh, Will and Grace. My mom used to oh, love, okay. my, my mom okay. used to love that show. And they were on there talking about uh, they they now text and they don't know when the transition happened to where they were having phone calls and then it went into text. Their and friends now, that just text each yeah, other. They just text now. They don't even talk on the phone. They used to talk on the phone and then he said, I never got that text message about when we moved into text messaging. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So now everybody texts. So I completely understand that where yeah. the, the, you lose the level of, not necessarily uh, 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 maybe the confidence of the guy approaching the yeah. the woman, you know. Um, there is like uh, being, we work in nightlife. Yeah, and yeah. How long have you worked in nightlife? <sighs> <laughs> What's wrong? It's okay, man. You forty seven, man. It was cool. Like, Fresh, fit, like it's fifteen cool. years, like fifteen. Fifteen years. Yeah. clean, man. So you know, you ever notice like um, the liquor? We know the liquor's gonna give courage. Yeah, yeah. But that right. So, so when the club is bright, people get a little bit more steel, mm-hmm. right? But when that light, when that lighting is dark, mm-hmm. you see that confidence rise, man. I think mm-hmm. that's a level of we we lost that confidence because I know when I was a kid, man, we like I told you, we was in the mall, man. I'm about to go and get her number. Oh shoot, we used to call people from across the street. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah. So you, th- you, so I know you talked about. Uh, the uh, relationship side of things captivating or catching everybody yeah. right now. Um, is that where you, uh, cause you, you want to tell the folks, I know you got your, your stuff that you do. You got your podcast. You oh yeah. 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 Uh, make it make sense podcast on YouTube. Uh, and we, we talk about, you know, modern dating and uh, getting folks together, but primarily, I mean, a lot of my stuff has to do with my purpose and that's, you know, making sure the community does business with one another and yeah. gets into relationships with one another so we can be a stronger community. You yeah, know, you, you're the source. So you remember when, uh, uh, Neo, um, you know, I think that was, was that two visions? Uh, he was looking for the source. He's looking for, uh, was that two when he found him? It was the second one in Matrix. He was looking for the source, and when he finally got to the source, it was an old white guy. But you, you the, you the old, <laughs> the you, you old black, white guy. You, you the old white guy, but you black. You are the source. I had a uh, there was a young lady. Remember, um, I introduced you to her. her name was uh, I think her Instagram was like Madam or whatever, mm-hmm. and she had just moved out. And I was like, listen, you want to know anything in this city mm-hmm. of importance? Coming black, African American, uh, you want to meet, greet, shake, uh, buy. That's the guy. Mm. You are the source. How did you build yourself up like that, man? How did you get, how did you just come in and and, and take over uh, Phoenix? I, I really do feel like you're the guy. I don't know if you got props you want to get to somebody else, but I feel like you're that guy. I've known you forever. Uh, appreciate it, man. Um, to be honest with you, um, I just felt like there was, there was a need for, you know, more togetherness. Um, obviously, where we at, folks live more spread out. Yeah. So they need something to do to come together. Obviously we work in nightlife. Folks are going to do that and come together, but right. you want to be able to see black people on more than just, you know, midnight, you know, mm-hmm. you want to be able to actually have cookout vibes and right. just enjoy folks and get familiar being familiar. Oftentimes folks will say, you know, out here we may not have, you know, culture. And my response will be, you know, well, you got to step in to be a part of building it. Right. 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 And so uh, I've been <clears> blessed to actually, it's, it's not just me. I, I got a, a tribe of folks that are doing amazing work. Uh, and that's acres uh, who runs the Archwood exchange. Nice. Uh, Archer and Greenwood being the main intersection of uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma's uh, black wall street. So. I'm going to pause you just for a hot second. Okay. Did you hear the clip? Uh, I sent it to you. Didn't I send it to you? Possibly. Uh, the Tom Hanks clip. Visions. Did I send you the Tom Hanks clip? Him talking about. Yes. Bro, can you can you do me a favor? Can you send that to Fresh, please? But you, we're, everybody just chill. I want Fresh to watch the clip. Okay. And this is why Tom Hanks is my favorite actor. Now I know I catch bullets because I am black Eddie Black, but Tom Hanks is my guy. The man is more. When did he become your guy? Was He's it been my guy? Was it was it when he was alone? Wait, what? Oh, Castaway? Um, no. Uh, Quiet is Kept, Forrest Gump is my favorite movie. I think it's the most complete movie you Jenny can find. Jenny was a motherfucker. Yeah, she? I think it's the... <laughs> you remember the Tom Hanks clip from Forrest Gump? Oh, my God. You don't want to show him that. <laughs> send him the Tom Hanks one first, and then I'm, uh, we can send him the other one, too. Because... Uh, that that Tom Hanks clip it's funny you just that's amazing that that happened I just seen it today and I sent it to the visions I thought I sent it to you because sometimes there it is the massacre 
And my question, question was this. this. What's, What's the, the Tulsa Massacre? How, How is it that, that it wasn't until, until two years ago that I heard about the Tulsa, Tulsa Massacre? Massacre? How, How is that possible? I've heard, heard about Custer's uh, uh, bad, uh, the, the Little Big Horn. horn. I, heard I heard about the Alamo. Alamo. Um, you, know, you know, I heard about, about the Triangle Shirtwaist Fire. You know, I heard about all kinds of disasters in which people died. But, but I had never heard about this thing, thing that happened in 1921, only three years before my dad, dad was born. One of the most successful black communities in America, in America Black Wall Street, which everybody was not only burned out of their homes and their businesses, but then driven, driven out of the city limits by an angry mob of, of I'm, I'm sorry, white people. people. How is it that this was not taught to me? Because I tell you, at the age of 10, when I was in fifth grade, living in Oakland, California, that would have been a moment of enlightenment for me. And it made me mad. It made me mad that somebody had somehow made an editorial process of what was appropriate for us to learn about our own American history. It made me angry. And, uh, and uh, it, it took me, it took me 64, it took me 54 years, and I find this out, it's not right. It's not right, it's doing a disservice to all of America. You know who, who you know who's the blame for that? Talk to me. Uh, they're called the Sisters of the Confederacy. Oh, shit. This and is about to be, this is going, go ahead, let so me know. So the Sisters of the Confederacy, they are actually the ones that are responsible for what books get fed to your children below the Mason-Dixon line. Wow. And so, <clears throat> and so I, I imagine that some of that probably heated over to California, you know, in 50s and 60s. Right. But they're responsible for keeping certain things out of, you know, American history books that children learn. Right. So- um, just the way that some kids may grow up or let's say some boomers may grow up thinking that there's nothing wrong with the way that they behave or their history is absolutely great or, you know, slavery wasn't really that bad <laughs> or <laughs> they don't know anything about, you know, the devil's punch bowl, you know. The um, devil's punch bowl. Yeah, they don't know anything about like mass graves right, and right, just right, black right. folks right. or Lake Lanier where you just... It's a great black town, and then you just throw a bunch of water on it and drown yeah. them, and now you got a lake, and then around that, you got a white town. Like, wow. they don't know nothing about that because wow. the Sisters of the Confederacy just basically keep it out of the books. Keep it out of the books. So, yeah, that would be why he just now... Which is crazy, right? Doesn't yeah. that seem crazy? It blew me away, and I sent. I swear I could have sent it, sent it to you, but I sent it to Visions, yeah. and it just blew me away. But you were talking about those, uh, I'm assuming the, the, the cross yeah. streets in there. Can you mm -hmm. continue about Archer the and Greenwood is the main cross streets of uh, uh, Black Wall Street in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and that's uh, basically what we're trying to recreate out here in Phoenix, right. you know, uh, through the Acres Foundation. Um, it's a... Uh, uh, collaboration of multiple businesses and they have their own website that kind of shows, you know, all the black businesses of the city. So when folks come to visit here, they know where to go, they know what to do. Um, and they, they just know where to find, you know, us, us. What has yeah. that process been like? Challenging, yeah. easy, uh, rewarding, so, rewarding. Okay. Yeah. Talk rewarding. Me. It's, I mean, anything that's, uh, worth doing ain't going to be easy, right? but, I mean, even if it's, you know, just a couple of minutes that somebody, you know, gets to come to a particular event or even just a daytime event that's actually meant for us to, you know, act crazy, but they get to see, you know, right. black folks all in one spot. Right. You know, even if there's some white folks there too, it's, it's a, <laughs> whatever, you know, yeah. but us being in control of the vibe instead of, you know, you rarely seeing us at all. Yeah. Um, and then just being able to get familiar with being familiar again. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Whereas like, let's say in, in, in Tulsa, probably, you know, everybody knew everybody. Right. Right. Uh, right everybody right. was going to the same church. Yep. Um, now everybody doesn't go to the same church, but maybe your church is down the street. My church is over here, but we all going to see each other over here and we know where to go now. Yep, yep, you know yep, what I'm saying? Yep. So just creating community again. Yeah. You know? um, I, I always uh, admire because you all you're extremely intelligent. Thank you, brother. Always, always, always active. 
always making sure somebody, hey, we over here, we over here, we over here. Um, and at the same time, I still get a little bit of enjoyment because you'll cook us. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> In a good, fun way. You know what I'm saying? That's why I said I enjoy watching your videos. You'll go ahead and set flame when needs flames need to be set. Is there somebody out there that you like uh, outside of, uh, I forgot the guy's name you said goes into the Walmarts and stuff, And but mm-hmm. is there somebody out there that you, that put you on game that set you on the path that you are on right now. I, Cause I want to get uh, and then outside of your family, like uh-huh. your pops and stuff like that. But I want to get to that later on in Chicago and stuff like that. Yeah. But anybody that puts you onto the path that you are currently on and blazing right now. Um, well, a, a or did lot, you have that in you already? A lot, a lot of this comes from when I moved out here, um, I was in a completely white neighborhood. Yeah. And so, I know what it feels like to just kind of be isolated and not really be able to move around. Right. So in knowing that feeling, I want to make sure other folks know that they have options. They ain't just got to sit at the house. Right. You know, or just, you know, go shoot baskets at the hoop in your driveway. Like right. you could actually try to see folks, but yeah. I got to give a lot of props to, you know, my tribe that uh, started the Archwood Exchange. Uh, they own the Strong Wool Hat Company. They own uh, pretty much three businesses on Roosevelt Row. You oh, know? wow. Okay. Yeah, and they just uh, constantly encourage other folks to keep their businesses thriving. Uh, shout out to um, Matt uh, or Brother Ali, yeah. um, Henry, and uh, his lovely wife, Havana, you know, um, they, they're very, very huge as far as the community is concerned with uh, getting folks together and, and actually putting work behind yeah. it. Not just saying, we need to do this, man. Mm-hmm. You know, like if, if they see a void, yeah. they immediately are tr- trying to figure out how to solve the problem to where not only folks are able to get together, but they're able to, you know, make some money yep. and be able to... <clears throat> create a network, yeah. you know, not just be able to just come and shake hands and slap ass and go home. Yeah. You know, what do you think the perception of Phoenix is when it comes to African-Americans down here or what people think on the outside black folks uh, uh, on the outside? I'm, I'm pretty sure folks have an idea that, you know, it's a smaller community compared right. to where they're coming from. Right. But um, they know that there's got to be something here, yeah. right? More yeah. than it was 20 years ago. I got an interesting question for okay. you on that. Do you feel like we helped out a lot in nightlife? Absolutely. You, there, I, Absolutely. I was telling uh, GQ Jones, I was telling him, I was like, that run at International, right? And the, the the artists that we had come through, even even and, your time in Revolver, and before oh, yeah, that, yeah, 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 and before yeah, yeah, that yeah. too, yeah. Um, um, the, the Revolver, uh, uh. I felt like was on the cusp of social media and I felt like international mm-hmm. had the, the full blown, uh, we had the gram cracking off. You had the Snapchat cracking yeah, off yeah, and I yeah, felt yeah. like people were really able to see. And I was telling them, I was like, bro, I think we are responsible for a lot of folks moving down here. Even though I know you the weather credit. You should, should definitely take credit. Cause mm-hmm. you gotta, you gotta look at all the viral moments. Yeah. Remember at one point you all were thinking about doing your, a reality show. Yeah. Right, because oh, yeah, it was that yeah, yeah, yeah. it was yep, that big yep, of a yep, deal, yep, yep, yep. you know. You was involved in that, yeah, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah. So, um, I would definitely uh, give yourselves a pat on the back because when when people come here just to visit, even if it's March Madness, Super Bowl, or whatever, right, they looking where they need to go, right, right, and right. they know they know what we to got do. March Madness coming too, yeah, you know what absolutely. Do. Um, do you feel like what do you feel like is missing in the city when it comes to? To bring in black folks together. What's the, is, or is it there? Is it something else that needs to be sprinkled in? Is it, is it more effort or energy? Is it more businesses? What is it that you think we're missing? Um, seriousness and intention. Mm. Uh, when it comes to building a power base, not just, it's one thing to start a business because you want to. <laughs> this dude, <Wow. laughs> uh, scales on here talking about cap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, dude, this dude. Because uh, you got this shit out serious and shit. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna switch it up in a minute. Serious, nah, bring, seriousness bring and more seriousness and intention you know, uh, when it comes to. I, I need people to, to see. You. I want people to see. Because uh, I mean, we 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 build and open up businesses. 
for the purpose of, yeah, CP3 going off. Um, we build up these businesses so, like, you know, our family can be good. Right, right. Um, but I look at it in an idea really wholly as um, if these businesses do well and they thrive, they give an opportunity to hire some other people or to start scholarship funds or to fund politicians right. or to buy subdivisions and you buy in these subdivisions, all y'all living in these subdivisions and you build up these great families and now you all have children and these children probably get together with each other and do the same thing all over yeah, again. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So it's not just like, Hey, you know, we got a building and we go make 50,000 a day <laughs> and we floss. No, I no, this is about, this is about, you know, creating the kind of communities that we say we want to live in. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. uh, you ever just thought about maybe running for council? <laughs> No, no, you know, I'm gonna be a councilman. You know, I'll be like a good brother that just passed, <laughs> uh, Mr. Mays. Oh, got you, got yes. you, got you, got you. So you tell, so you're telling me you've never set back. Do you feel like because you know there's gonna be some some uh, some TMZ drops somewhere? They're gonna be like, oh, we got fresh ass naked in the shower. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> with, with, with three of the best. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I mean, I, I thought about teaching and uh, you maybe kill. an attorney. You would kill. Yeah, teaching, teaching, yeah, teaching yeah, and maybe yeah, being an attorney. I, I can't have you an attorney. You too funny. I can't have yeah. you. I, no, you ain't getting me out of jail. Y'all you, think you I don't... came to play around with y'all? <laughs> God damn it, I'm not. <laughs> uh, your journey in the nightlife. Yeah, right. Uh, mm-hmm. You want uh, I, you? You're a DJ. Um, you host for us. Um, you I, a mixologist. Can I call you like a mixologist? You know what I'm saying? You be putting the music together. The blend. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, okay. sure, sure. Mm-hmm. When'd you get started, man? When'd you get started DJing? How'd you uh, get started DJing? How did it? How did it all open up? Man, I uh, shoot. Let's let me say like you know, uh, college. I went down to uh, Tallahassee. Uh, Tallahassee. And uh, a friend of mine just, you know, they kind of encouraged me to come down there to uh, check out FAMU. And I, I did, I went down there for homecoming. I fell in love with it. Yeah. And uh, so I ended up staying down there in the city and uh, getting a uh, internship uh, down there. And uh, I was always, you know, working the club scene and just the style of, of music and and MCing really, really, you know, kind of captivated me. Yeah. And I also knew that this flavor was definitely not in Phoenix. Right, right, right. So right, for sure. you know, all of these, all of these dope songs and everything, I gotta put folks on to yeah. this. Yeah. And so I just start, you know, actually burning one CD at a time yeah, on a computer. Is. Yeah. And just You remember burning? Yeah. You had to sit there, boy. Hey, <laughs> hey, if it, it anything good ain't easy, right. you know? Anything good ain't easy. So uh, I would burn them one at a time. I probably yep. broke that computer doing that shit. You, you was writing markers. I think I talked to GQ oh, about with that. The yeah, definitely yeah, with the Sharpie. Yeah, definitely with Sharpie. Yeah, yeah, definitely yeah. with the Sharpie. And uh, I would just, at, in the middle of the night, I would see like the repo cars coming out in the apartment complex and yeah. I just leave them on top of people's Are you serious? fucking cars. Yeah. <laughs> that's a real thing? I would just leave them on top of people's cars <laughs> that's and cool, shit. That's cool, man. Um, and then, uh, you know, I got here and... Uh, Thanks to my 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 homeboy DJQ, I, I said to him, I said, "Hey man, I I got a lot of music. I want I want folks to you know check it out." He was a DJ. I said, "Hey, can you mix this for me?" Yeah, and uh, I'm gonna put them on CDs and put some graphics on them, and you know, you, just, you know, I'm gonna just pass them out anywhere I can. And he thought about it, and he was like, "I can do that <laughs> shit. <laughs> you gonna do that shit?" So yeah. he he taught me how to DJ, and you know. Pretty much, I just got heavy into the mixtape game. Uh, how long was that process learning to DJ? Was it difficult? Yeah, man. Um, you were using records at the time, right? Yeah, you, it was. Use? I mean, it was still Serato, but okay, turntables. Okay, and, I tried uh, to put you back in the seven. My bad. I, yeah, no, you, you good? You good? Yeah, yeah you, it was fifty uh, nine. 59, huh? you 59, right? I, okay. turn, I turn seventy four tomorrow. <laughs> just mess it. Go ahead. Bro. Uh, but no, getting to. Uh, Cause you automatically, you know, think, you know, Hey, I got rhythm, nigga. Right. Cause you, <laughs> you know, yeah. so you, you don't think, you know, it's going to be difficult at all, but it's, you know, it's kind of like learning, you know, how to write, yeah. you know, and then you have to take into consideration, 
um, you know, music, note, key, speed. Yeah. And once you get outside of your bedroom mixing, now you need to read this crowd of people. Right. Figure out where they're from, how old they are, what kind of music they like. Are they twerkers? Are they head bobbers? You know, that yeah. kind of thing. So, which is really, that's really the, the, the quantum physics of it right. is reading people. Yes. Like sure. I, after you do all the stuff in the bedroom, that's just kind of like the training wheel stuff. Right. But, uh, as far as learning, you never stop. And if you do, then you may not be you working gotta, no more. You got a problem. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's innovate or die, but definitely getting comfortable. Do you, do you remember your first gig? First paying gig. First paying gig. It was a wedding. This dude didn't want to do it. He called me and my roommate to come do it. Yeah. He got there. I heard that wedding money is all right, man. It's incredible because yeah. it's a once in a lifetime thing. But let me ask you something. Okay. Yeah. How did you do at the wedding? And did you feel the pressure of uh, providing the soundtrack for somebody's uh, eternal love? Okay. So I, I didn't actually have to do too much of the DJ and just right. a little bit. And I was, I was the host of the event. Um, but immediately once we got there, we saw why the dude left. <laughs> he lied to us and told us that his wife was having a baby. Wow. But we got there and we just realized it was a bridezilla wedding. Oh, wow. And he didn't want no parts of it. The lady was mean? The whole family was crazy. Oh, it was like, wow. uh, they was like all from Turkey or something. Oh, right? yeah. And they went, not crazy, but they was just real animated about this is their day. Yeah. Right. And bro was like, yo, yeah, my lady's having a, uh, having her baby. I got to go. <laughs> and, uh, and we got you there got and we was like, here. your wife ain't even no goddamn <laughs> you baby. You just wanted to get out. <laughs> and it was like, uh, uh, think, shit, about a, think about a room, maybe just a little bit deeper than this. Right. And we up against the wall. Yeah. It almost looks like an ASU auditorium. Right? Okay. Okay. And, but just much smaller than that. Yeah. Right. And we up against the wall, just trying to figure it out. <laughs> right. But. The crazy thing was, rock that bitch. Jammed it. My my man Q, he rocked it. Yeah. I'm hosting yeah. and they loved us, man. They hugging us on out the door. They like, you ain't gotta leave. You can stay all hey, night. And we was like, that's what's up, man. Get, get <laughs> you know? But no, nah, it was after that, it was like, oh man. Right. You you, you came through the fire. You can do whatever now. Yeah, for sure. You can sure. play a bridezilla <laughs> on, on, at the. You good? Now. Yeah, you straight. What do you think uh, when it comes to nightlife out here? And you you're you're in the. I see. I'll see you Friday. I'll see you Saturday. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um. There is a new move, a new thing of people just being inside the club and they just kind of chilling, man. They just mm -hmm. standing around. And I know, like I said, we've you uh, we have at least worked together now. Uh, 13 mm -hmm. same as GQ about 13 yeah. good ones and uh what do you think has changed from when you started middle until now um I think social media has a big deal to do with it because if, if talk you, to me if you think about it um everybody now has access to what you look like what you do mm. and your lifestyle yeah. so it's almost this kind of pressure to make it look perfect mm. Right. So when you get out in the real world, you got to kind of keep up the facade. You can't get extra goofy and sweat, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. whereas before nobody knew your name. You you didn't give a damn. Yeah, for you sure. Coming there to enjoy the music. The music also has something to do with it. Um is it is it all right? For, you said the music had. If I could jump yeah, in, yeah. So the music has something to do with it. Is it okay for me to ask? Is it? If you're comfortable, I'll cut it down. You know you could. But uh, they, I don't know if this is like the, they call it the, the, the woman wave of music. Oh, um, I think that actually to, as much as, you know, I, I, as a, just a person, some of those, some of those songs kind of, you know, get on my nerves, but at the same time as a, as a DJ in a club, those songs actually get people active. Yeah. Right. Um, it's the other songs where, you know, it's like most of us ain't trapping. Yeah, for you sure. You know what I'm saying? For well, sure. So, but if we constantly got that being drilled in, then, you know, there's not much to do 
on a song like that, that'll make you sweat. Now you can still get hyped to it, right? But if it's if it's a heavy dose of it, you know, you got you got to mix it up. You well, know? Why is it when we do R and B night, man? You could just see. You can see folks singing. The energy is high. People mm-hmm. are having a good time. They dance yeah. and the sweat is there. What is, I mean, the, 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 our mixing's better now. Mm-hmm. Our mastering's better now. Mm-hmm. The mics are better now. Everything hits harder. The, the, the vocals are more crisp. How mm-hmm. is it that the, the late eighties and nineties and uh, early two thousands just continues? It just in nineties in general, just continue to make these people so happy on an R and B night. What do you think that is? Um, I mean, you, you got to, it goes back to what we we're talking about before more technology. We got the further we got apart. Cause the more mm. we kept doing was focusing yeah. on this, but you know, when we didn't have it, all we had was each other, Yeah, you know? And so it's actual real joy yeah. and folks want to feel genuine yeah. and music is a big contributor to that. Yeah. So if folks, you know, actually, you know, get an opportunity to feel emotion, the music is going to be one of the things that allows them to do it. R&B music, especially 90s. Yeah, uh, I mean, shoot, definitely even before that, gives you the opportunity to do it without yeah. really caring yeah. about what people think about you, you know. Yeah. Other stuff is kind of too cool for school. And, <laughs> and I get it, you know, because I, I, I like just about, you know, everything or can find something good in everything. Right. But the R&B music is really what... uh it allows folks to to be what whatever they want to be. Like a uh, short story. When I first started DJing a brunch, I really didn't know you know what was acceptable, uh, but I didn't want folks to be bored, and so uh, I started to see, see folks dancing, and I didn't stop them. This young lady came up to me. She told me she said, uh, "I want you to know, all you had to do was give them permission." Right. What you mean? And what she meant was. What she mean? Yeah. All you had to do was give them permission to act the way they want to act and feel how they want to feel. Mm. You ain't wow. You ain't got to have them be uptight and just sit right. in their seats. Right. All you had to do was give them permission to be able to dance and do what, what it is that they already wanted to do. And they'll do it. I'm going to fuck with you here. Okay, we're going to stick on that. What is, what is one song from the 80s that you could play right now? In any environment, late eighties, you we ain't got to go deeper. You could, I know you, you, you a music connoisseur, mm-hmm. so you know your shit. What is one song from the eighties you feel like you could play right now? People gonna enjoy. People are gonna enjoy, e- like even today. Yeah, today's youngsters, <sighs> Gen Z, in the eighties. We going nineties next too. Oh my god. Uh, I got one, but I'm gonna wait. I'm this on you. You the DJ. Oh, uh, you know what? Oh, that was the eighties. Uh, Bobby Brown. Okay. Um, every little step. Nice man. What you yeah. know about that? Yeah. You remember uh, uh, house party? Remember yeah. uh, plays dad or uh, kids dad come in? Uh-huh. He said you ain't going to no party. Every little step you gonna be. <laughs> every step you take is gonna be around this room tonight. <laughs> uh, give me uh, that was classic. <laughs> yeah, that was classic. He said you ain't going to no damn party. Every little step you take is gonna be around this room tonight. <laughs> What is uh give me a song from the nineties, man? Um, let me see. I mean, anything SWV. Um Damn. but definitely uh I mean Tevin Campbell, can we talk? Okay. Got yeah. you. Okay, not bad. Uh give me two early two thousands. You can go two thousand t- up to two thousand ten. Uh that everybody's gonna vibe with. Okay. Uh Jagged Edge, where the party at? Damn, not bad, bro. Um and let me see. We got to go with the. Uh, I mean, you know, shouts out to Big Mo. Wait, no, that wasn't that wasn't early two thousand. Oh, there it is. I was. Ooh, I heard it. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Sometimes at ninety eight two thousand, it get real get, get, blurry. <laughs> it get real blurry. Get mixed but, in. But no, nah, uh, you don't have to call Usher. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. all right. I'm not mad at you. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, ask you to pick a song from today's music that you absolutely hate, but you know it's gonna go over the top. It's gonna be a hit. It's gonna it's gonna get the crowd moving. Okay, that you absolutely hate. Absolutely hate. 
Oh, <laughs> uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, the new sexy red one. Which one's the new sexy red one? A bow, bow, bow. I heard, have we heard? Do I? Yeah, do we, we, hear? we play it. We play it. We play it. I don't. I mean, sometimes I. You you know me. I I build a fort in the corner and then I <laughs> and then I hide, man. I, I don't build, hear nothing. <laughs> I don't hear. It, it, hear it, a bunch it, of nothing, it, says, it says fuck my baby dad. Got you, man. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I got, yeah. You, I got you. I got you. Okay, okay. Oh, uh, you're from Chicago, right? Yeah. Are you from? You know, you from. You from Chicago? Or you from? You know what I'm saying? Wait, I mean, I don't know. You, <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what I mean, I, I, <laughs> I, I, I spent some time in there, and then on the way out, I spent some time out of there. You know, got you. Uh, your biggest influences in your life, man. That's a broad. No, I mean, okay. Well, I mean, I know you, you and your pops are you. Buds, like you, you yeah. tight, right? Mm-hmm. You know, is that like your growing up? Was that your? Uh, that's your, 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 the person you looked up to. You, you, you emulated. You wanted to be like, or you yeah, my, had my, a lot of his qualities. And my dad is like kind of an osmosis kind of thing. You yeah. know, like watch I the mean, words. Watch the words. When you get to throwing them at me, and yeah. I got to think in my box. I got to think about Will Smith in the damn movie, uh, and I got to remember because I, you know. cause I got I got a dad. And I, I have my stepdad. They they both are very influential. Oh, wow. uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, my my dad um, just mannerisms, being more outspoken, um, and not really, you know, giving a damn about, uh, you know being embarrassed, you know, yeah. being the life of the party, um, but still being able to be a gentleman, that kind of thing. Um, and, and drawing a line in the sand on respect. Right. Right. Uh, my stepdad, uh, influenced me on, you know, how to move in rooms and, uh, be perceived properly. Yeah. Right. Um, and a lot of those are, a lot of those things are just through osmosis. It wasn't like, yeah. and by osmosis, I mean like, you know, right. you learn through seeing or being around it. Right, right. Right. It wasn't like all the time where they just take you aside and say, you do this, 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 this. Yeah. And sometimes they'll, they'll, they'll say to me, you know, um, uh, I remember my stepdad, uh, when talking to me about finding a wife, he was like, you know, just make sure you find somebody that's, you know, graceful and generous. Right. Mm, yeah. And, uh, my dad, as far as dealing with women, uh, I remember, you know, him telling me say, don't ever let nobody put you on front street. Mm, right. Yeah. And those was both extremely valuable, right. You know, things to say to a young man, you know, so he's not going out into the world wide eyed and bushy tailed and not understanding, you know, how yeah. to handle himself out there. Is there a question that you always wanted to ask your pops, but you never asked him before? <sighs> oh, man. <laughs> I always say this. This is what I say, man. If you have an opportunity, these the, the dumb, silly questions you may ask your friends, the dumb, silly questions you may ask your girl uh, or your boyfriend, whatever the case may be, um, you know, and you the same way you get to know uh, it's similar, kind of similar. You get to way to know your friends, to know your your, your partner. Um, I, I feel like if you get the opportunity, you should ask your parents some of these questions. Man, mm-hmm. a lot of times you just see them and you meet them, mm-hmm. and you talk to them. Y'all, I'm back. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm visiting back home or whatever. But to dig into what was you listening to at prom when you was dancing? You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? What was something you enjoy? What was a what was a place you went to go eat back in? The, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. What was a question you would ask? You know, like your pops or your moms that, that you've never asked? Um, let me see. Um, a lot of times I like to pick my dad's brain about his experience uh, militarily, right? Mm. He was a Vietnam vet. Oh, wow. And so cool. um, a, a lot, lot of, of uh, for a lot of those guys, guys, a lot of those things still affect them today. He's right. Right. Down San Antonio. You, you know? know? <laughs> yeah. He knows. He, I can't help it because he knows. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm the dude playing the dude, yeah, the sky's yeah, the dude, yeah. the being the dude. Yeah. My, My bad, y'all. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I would just, uh, you know, ask him about uh, how he was able to adapt coming back home after that, you yeah. know? And um, that, was, that was a vicious time. That was yeah. a tough time. Man. Yeah. 
So, and, and then for, for my for my stepdad, I would really ask him, you know, what in particular happened yeah. in order for us to uh, actually move out here. Uh, mm. A lot of people don't know. Uh, my stepdad was actually he was the chief of police in uh, a town called Evanston that was on the north side of Chicago, and he was exceptionally good at his job. So yeah. much so they had like one homicide. Wow. Right. Uh, but Chicago is not a not an easy town to right. to you know work in. Right. So after doing such a great job, all of a sudden. We was out of there, yeah. and for somebody that was so good, it was. Usually, that means that you know he was willing to stand on the shield. I listen. I'm if somebody doing wrong, is that what you kind of feel like? I was somebody was doing wrong. I came in and told somebody they was doing wrong, and they was like, "Oh, motherfucker." You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's, it's cops for life. You know what I'm saying? Is that yeah. something you feel, or you feel like it's something you? you I, feel, I feel like it's it's definitely got to be something that. Uh, I can't wait for you to ask, and then I can get an answer for this. I really <laughs> so want to know. You know, so somebody has some dirty hands, yeah, you know what I'm saying? And you. so he, he, I feel like he was too good of a guy in order to, you know, maybe play ball or something like that. But uh, it's a long time ago now, so I imagine, you know, it wouldn't be a big deal. Yeah. Hopefully, you know. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm 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 very proud of both of them, you yeah. know, and what they were able to come through in that city at that time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, and to be able to make something of themselves. You well, know, you're like I told you earlier, man. Extremely intelligent. Thank you, man. Uh, super smart, well kept, boy. You be you be on it. Did we talk about the hairline last week? When we was interviewing GQ, talk about the hairline. Is that what he said to you? Yeah, yeah. It was, he clean, man. The motherfucker's cold. Now listen. Mm-hmm. Why you ain't got no kids, man? Oh, man. Are you in a Big Brother program or something? I mean, nigga, you could be, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You ain't got no kids, man. You'd be a fantastic father. Why you? Yeah. What's going on, yeah, man? Yeah, you yeah, plan yeah. on having kids? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, that is, uh, you know, that's something I plan on doing. Right. Uh, but I just got to, you know, I got to. Why has that not happened? Uh, because I, I, I like to be married. Right, uh, you know. Why well, you sure? You know, it's a little time for a little spice. I'm gonna go left. I'm gonna go right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, you, you I've heard, can I? Can I? Yeah, the wrong man. Yeah. I, I've heard you talk about the poly world. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? All right. So yes. is that, does that mean when you say get married? Does that mean you got four of them? You got four wives? Uh, I mean, I met a man with seven wives. Remember that from uh, uh, Die Hard Three? They was on the phone. I met a man from Seven Wives who had seven. Okay, okay, cool. All right, go ahead. Uh, yes, yep, yep. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I would, I would love to to have that, you know. But I'm not against, you know, monogamy. I'm not against it, but I would definitely love to, you know, have, you know. Do you more. okay? Do you feel like you can find your uh, your one or your two here in uh, Phoenix? Is or is that something you feel like you gotta you gotta step out of town to do that? I I think it's the it's possible. I think it's I think since social media has become much more difficult. I would yeah. say that. Yeah. I to me, um, I, I think that it, it's become difficult. Uh, but if you know you in a space, right? You uh -huh. know you there. Yeah. And this is the way it is now. Mm -hmm. This is how we operate. Mm -hmm. You get sharper in there. It's mm -hmm. like uh, anybody. Like uh, iron it's sharpens like, iron. Yeah, there is. Mm -hmm. you, you take. They talk about LeBron couldn't play in the nineties and eighties. I feel like if you put LeBron in that era, mm -hmm. he has to learn how to play in that era. Mm -hmm. And I think he would do the same thing that he was doing now. That he's doing now. You know, what I'm saying. I, of course, you you dealing with some more physicality. We can get in all that. You mm -hmm. know, I don't want to fuck up LeBron. I know how much you probably got some LeBron boxes on right now. I don't want to do that to you. I don't want to get involved in all that but what i'm saying is i think if you know the space that you're in and what mm -hmm. you're working with i feel like people can you know uh be able to thrive in it what if, what do you say oh he said you just, uh scale said you just start circulating the bag <laughs> talking about <laughs> i love it i love it i love it um but so you you really feel that social media is is that something that stops you personally or you feel like um, you're just not ready yet i'm I, you, you're you're the no i mean for me what i'm thankful i i can 
you know, consistently garner some attention, but I also understand that I'm in a very visible space. Right. 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 Um, so, and I mean, even if I wasn't, I, I kind of got a outgoing of enough personality to where it's not a big deal. Right. right? Um, but uh, I do recognize that the kind of things that like uh, Dave Young was talking about, just, you know, having a good time, chilling, museum, mountain, workout, simple, fun stuff. Right. Um, can sometimes, you know, be uh, met with a little bit more resistance than normal. Right. Um, for me, normally I, I don't have a problem getting a, you know, a gym date. You know, or something you like that. You don't have a problem? No, I mean, I, I will find some resistance, but I can just find somebody else that will go. Resistance. I like yeah. how you use such a, such a I told you, specialist. I got to, I got you? to, I got to. <laughs> they, they've been going at my head for years, man. Oh, so I got, to, you know, I got to figure out, you know, certain words. So you, you, you can find the women that want to hop on the mountain that are going the mountain with you, that right, are, right. that'll hit the gym with you. And I know, um, we've had a lot of discussions on the side about that. Mm-hmm. And do you feel, do you s- <sighs> just do it, man? You know, uh, do you see a lot more black women getting in the gym? They getting in there. I know you are. Uh, he, listen, Fresh has talked. You've talked about this before. I have, right? I have, okay, I have, cool, I have, I have. boy. Damian looked at me, had me sweating. I said, damn, I say some bad shit. I know Fresh didn't talk about it before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. Um, yeah. do you feel like that's something that uh, as a guy, you you got your, yourself together? You, you, you're a rich motherfucker. You, Tesla driving some a bitch and um, business owning motherfucker, uh, influence motherfucker. Um, do you feel like that's something that you look for in a woman? They got to they gotta be somebody that's in the gym. It's no way Kamar Usman is on this fucking live right now, bro. Are you serious? Usman, hey, bro, this nigga's on the live right put now. Him, put him up. I don't know. Hit the camera, oh, nigga. God, Hit the camera. This nigga Usman is on the... Oh, shit. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, yo. My bad, man. Uh, <laughs> the, the champ. <laughs> The champ, the, the champ, champ Usman. The oh champ, my what god, up, champ? Oh my god, bro, that's insane. Hey, um, all right, cool. What's what was we saying? I got a little, I got a little happy, man. Uh, the, the champ, the champ. Got you were talking bro. about white, do white women need to go to the gym or something? <laughs> uh, I'm all fucked up right now, bro. That's the most cold shit ever, bro. Um, no, he's talking about you know. We, we, Black women getting in the gym, yeah, working. Yeah. I know that's what you into. You gotta find. You yeah. gotta find somebody that's like, doing like, that too. Like I said, everything that I talk about has to do with our community being better. Yeah. If our community is more physically active, our community is better. They're yeah. Healthier. Yeah. More likely to be in relationships and to have babies and be larger and have more political and financial power. Right. So, um, but yes, um, anybody that I would date, definitely, I would want them to. Uh, if not be, you know, used to going to the gym, at least be willing to adapt that as a normal part of their, you know, day to day. Yeah. Um, I mean, when you, anybody, whether man or woman, when you work out, even when you don't want to work out, that's some self-discipline, right? Right. 1,000%. And, uh, that's self-love. Self-love is like, you know, that's, that's like God inside you. You know, right. I want to see the God inside you. Right. If, if I'm laying there, you know, and you wake up and go work out at five o'clock in the morning, I'm like, damn, mm-hmm. that's just fucking admirable. <laughs> you know, <laughs> when you get back, sure. though, watch that thing out. We don't, you know, <laughs> watch that. Look at that. <laughs> and, uh, you know, appreciate for sure. the work you put in. For sure. You for know, sure, for sure. And I would imagine, no, I, I don't even imagine, I know that women appreciate when dudes go to the gym regardless you like the you can always talk i ain't you, you, yeah 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 for sure they can feel Hell it yeah. they can smell it they they mm-hmm. they like you know the the masculinity you know yeah. so give them more of that right. you know so yeah by all means i i, I absolutely love you know, an active woman. An I active gotcha. woman. I, I mean, gotcha, I, gotcha. I, I used to only date. I mean, I ran track, so I used to only date women that ran track. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We had one in here uh, Tuesday. She was. Uh, we were talking about. Uh, there was. You, you ever seen the Carisha game? 
the, she's a uh, uh, city girl. She got a, a a board game, and it's called uh, what the fuck? Carisha. Damn, I can't think of it. Uh, Carisha something. Um, she got um, like a board game. She got a act like a card game. It's a drinking game. Oh, okay. And right. one of the cards on there, I was saving for last because they was over in the corner. They was getting cooked up. They was mm. hitting the, hitting the Donnie. Donnie be taking over people's lives. I don't call him Julio. I call him Donnie. Donnie was hitting them back. They was chugging. They was having a grand, fantastic time. Mm-hmm. And I had a card that I took out of there, and the card says you gotta uh, you gotta race the person uh, 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 next to you, um, or you gotta take like three shots or Oof. something like that. Yeah, it was, it was, Lord. it was, it was brutal. And I actually had a reason why I was going with that. And you had, you had somebody in here that was a track person or something. Oh yeah. Yeah. There it is. She was ready to race. Uh-huh. One thousand percent. She was showing me the tattoo that she had, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? She said she was, she was 33 or something like that, but she said she ran track. You Still know prime. Saying? Yeah. Still- <laughs> Brother starving. <laughs> <laughs> Classic clips. That brother stopping. <laughs> 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 Fucking fantastic, oh, man. Oh man. Well, uh, listen, man. Like I like I like we got to, huh? Okay, let's get well, yeah, we I was just about to uh, I just want to play the game with my guy. Okay. Um yeah. but real quick, tell tell the folks what you got coming up. You got anything special? I know you'd be out of town doing all types of DJ events uh, and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, uh, we we will be in uh in uh, in Denver with Squizzy Taylor uh, tomorrow uh, for his R and B night, so uh, just tune into the live. Um, by all means, follow Squizzy Taylor. Thank him for having me out there. Um, and of course, uh, always Friday through Sunday, got one of the best brunches in the state at Sugar Jam. So by all means, come up there and visit us. Uh, you're my friend right now. Yeah, yeah, you're my friend right now. Yeah, yeah. I got the Sunday party. You're my friend. You good? No, I'm you just gotta, <laughs> Sugar Jams and, is legendary. Uh, you know, of course, join us no, at no, eleven. No, no, Sugar Jams is fucking legendary, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. This is fucking legendary so, work, bro. Yeah, yeah. Friday through Sunday, we up there at Sugar Jam vibe, and it's like, uh, it's like, uh, you know, it's like a cookout for real, for real. Yeah. You know, and uh, y'all had some some Gabrielle Union came up in that joint. Now nah, Gabrielle Union went to uh, oh, the, that was the, the other one. spot, Brunch House. They, okay, uh, my bad. Which I is uh, down in Levine. Yeah, my bad. Um, uh, but. Black folks is building up a bunch of things. We got one that's uh, coming down. That's in. what I wanted to ask you to keep yeah. going. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, How much time we, we got? Left? A brother uh, okay. building one down in uh, Chandler. Uh, shoot, uh, they gonna have? Huh? No, no, no. Lush, lush. I did uh, see that. So, okay, I did you see know, that. There's, there's Tempe. Okay. 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 Uh, but black folks, we are building, getting, we get information right. Got building you. stuff up all over the place. You know, so, just a little bit longer. We almost um, done. But yeah, yeah. Keith Lee. Keith Lee. I'm Keith sorry. Lee. About, yes, I said yes, Keith yes, Lee. Yes, yes. Niggas, it's Chief right. Keith. Keith Lee. I'll, I'll make it as uh, fast as possible Keith, for the camera. Keith Lee. Yes. Um, came through, mm-hmm. turned our city upside down. Down. That I have never seen. Mm-hmm. And I don't even spend that much time on Facebook. I'd rather sit in a tub full of water and drop a toaster in there than spend my time on Facebook. That's how, wow. you know what I'm saying? I don't be on there. You're missing you know a lot saying? of great LeBron debates. And that's why I'm not on there, man. I know that when I get on there, the first thing I'm going to see is fresh with this goddamn hand shooting. You know what I'm saying? Talk about how oh, LeBron still did it. He got to eat a goat. So no way, right? But he came to the city, turned it upside down. What happened? Uh, a lot of beautiful things, man. Lots of folks got some, uh, some well needed, uh, pub for the businesses. And we, we, we got to see some folks actually a little bit rude against, you know, businesses. Hoping, right. It was, it, yeah, was, it was dark. Folks it was got hoping dark for that, a second. that he got, they got bad reviews. And it's like, come on, man. You know, yeah. at the end of the day, these, if you put it like this. Keeping it real quick. If if you don't like a black business and you black, half of your responsibility is to tell them that and to say what what it is that they can work on, you know, yeah. instead of just saying, I wish this business would just stop. Look, shit. That's a whole lot of work, man. They got to go through paperwork, building this brick and mortar. And look, just tell them what it is that you don't like about it and what you think that they can improve. They can take it. They can take it. If they don't, they don't. But Anyway, Keith Lee came through, uh, went to the young brother Ace of Wings spot and uh, yep. 
he liked some, some wings. He didn't like some wings and folks went crazy. And it was like, listen, man, hey, I just had to tell people like, listen, don't go off the handle because at the end of the day, we only 4% of the population. We need every single piece of good business that we got and we need to keep on building it so that way folks can continue to do it when they move here and we don't stop. One of the, one of the things that inspired me the most when it comes to this is uh, I saw a documentary where uh, they have folks coming across the border and it would be, you know, some Latin folks on the border with brochures telling folks who to vote for, where to go to church, where to get a job, where to send your kids to school. Yeah. I feel like there's no reason that we shouldn't be able to do that when folks come here, you know, to Arizona from where they moving from. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. I, we, me and me and Visions looked at your video. We watched it. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you was quick. You got on that real quick. You wanted people to stand up, support, you know. Yeah. And, and you also said something that was interesting to me. I know I'm not supposed to be talking longer, but you said something that was interesting People don't understand Arizona. Sometimes people come to the city, they don't understand or how it is. Mm-hmm. What did you, what did you, you know? That it's, it's not like where you just came from, yeah. right? Like we trying to build up, we trying to build it up, but a lie can get around the world, you know, before the truth, put the shoes on. Be careful, bro. You know, you know what I'm so saying? <laughs> if, if, you, cold, boy. if you start normalizing, talking bad, yeah. then folks just going to, take that as okay yeah we that's what we do out here i got you and that's not what we do we build things up you the man motherfucker appreciate it man you the motherfucking man and now we about to play this game all right man uh it's called heads up man you get to choose something heads up (laughs) can you come help please no fuck that he getting off that phone so you just choose your category. You, I think you could go scroll down or you could scroll uh, left or whatever. Yeah, them, them mosquitoes, gnats in here acting a fool. Oh, okay. Who blockbuster movie is going to probably hurt me? <clears throat> let's, do, let's do it, motherfucker. All right. All right, man. Two, one. Oh, man, this is easy, man. It's a Disney movie, mm-hmm. right? It involves two dogs. And he was eating spaghetti. Uh, uh, all oh, dogs nah. go to heaven? N- no. Nah. Come on now. Uh, Fresh I- I- Lady I- in the Tramp. There it is. Go ahead. Yes, it is. Damn, I can't believe I got that. Ooh. Um, this movie, you're not going to get it, but this movie won a lot of awards. Um, the, op- the word opposite of yes is no. Um, we live, uh, the United States is a what? Country. Uh, what comes after the- No country for old men. Boy, that boy. I'm talking about movie. Uh, oh wow, uh, this is a cereal. Um, oh yeah, cocoa pebbles. Was used, yeah. Um, uh, this movie what takes place in long. What am I going to be after my birthday? Hangover, hangover. Yep. yep. Woohoo! Yep. Say it. What's hangover. In what's in? What's in front of it? The hangover. There it is. Let's do one more. Let's do one okay. more. God damn it! Good. Shit. Okay. You, you actually did really good on that shit. He actually did really good on no, that. No, y'all don't take my uh, my my <laughs> my plan. Okay, we all can't do trivia tonight, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> ah, shit, dude. Oh, what is you, uh? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's also. It's also uh, a clothing line, and the last, oh, uh, the last, uh, the last part of it is boss. The first part is what Hugo. Oh, um, where did the movie uh, The Hangover take place? Las Vegas, but uh, loathing in Las Vegas. First, if, the- yeah, if you're not first, you last, and then where did Hangover take over? Las Vegas. Say it one more time. Last Vegas. That is. Shit. All right. Um, shit. Uh, Paul, who plays for the Clippers, his first name is what? Chris. Uh, for the Clippers. He plays for oh, the Clippers. Shit. Paul George. Okay. So uh, then uh, where do animals hang out? Georgia the jungle. Bam. That boy, good. Boy. You want to do one more? Or you good? Oh, shit. You do that again. <laughs> 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 yeah, Davion was struggling, boy. Oh, no. 
Oh, shit, I picked the wrong one on accident, but oh shit, here we go. They go like, I seen you playing that game. Oh shit, I don't even know how to do this one. I don't even know what you picked, bro. I don't Superstars know. Superstars is what it is. Oh yeah, you going you got to pass on that one because that's. Oh man, she got she got fucked. Up. She she make chicken and she says some racist shit. She white. Uh, she says some, Paula White. Is you close though, Paula? Shit. Oh, you close as hell. She said race chicken, fried chicken, and she was uh, <laughs> Paula Dean. There it is. Bow. Oh, I didn't say it. Say pa- Paula Dean. Okay. <laughs> oh, this is simple, man. You know what I'm saying? Um. Oh shit. Uh. Yeah, Lady Gaga. There it is. Yep, that was good, man. They really sung it and shit. Oh, um. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, Harry, Harry Potter. Now, come on, he, Harry Potter Hogwarts with the glasses. He wear he wear glasses. Oh, the actor's name. Yeah, the actor's oh, name. I don't know the white boy's name. You don't know. Like, come on, man. God damn. Uh, man. Toby. So, I don't know. It's Daniel, Toby. Daniel Radcliffe. <laughs> she. Yeah. Right. All right, man. <laughs> I said she. <laughs> I I Daniel Ratcliffe. <laughs> I'm about to call his ass Toby. All right, Shit. Oh. Fresh. <laughs> Tell them where they can find you, your platform. Oh, man. Y'all can uh y'all can find me on any any um uh, social media under the DJ Freshmaker. Uh that's Twitter, that's YouTube, it's Instagram, it's TikTok. The DJ Freshmaker. Uh, if you want to get in line with uh, the podcast or any of the apparel, just check out yofresh.tv. And uh, like I said, by all means, if you want to catch me in action, I'm at 11-11 Friday and Saturday nights. And of course, the legendary Sugar Jam Friday through Sunday mornings, uh, 9 to 3 p.m. Nice. And I am Thaddeus Shade. Uh, this is Season of the Cloud. I appreciate everybody for listening. You can find me on Instagram at Thaddeus.Shade. You can find me on Facebook. I don't be on there at Thaddeus Shade. I'm on uh, Twitter. We don't call it Twitter no more, but are we? I still call it Twitter at Thaddeus Shade and the same on TikTok. Um, I want to say thank you, Fresh, for hopping on. Um, amazing, brother. I appreciate you, man. Thanks um, for having me, man. Um, and I know, I know that one day, man, me and you, me and you, brother, will come together and admit Steph Curry's the GOAT. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's been nice. It's been nice. And I-, I have been on a Starbucks strike when it comes to tea because these motherfuckers ain't got no honey. And I know about a month ago, I was complaining about these some bitches not having no honey. These some bitches still ain't got no honey. I said it again. These some bitches still ain't got no honey. They ain't got no honey, man. I go there, they ain't never got no honey. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to make my own medicine balls at the house because I don't really drink tea, but I would tear a medicine ball up. I said, I'll make my own tea at the house. So then I go, right? And I'm like, okay, what is a medicine ball, right? I go look and it's, uh, what is that shit? It's like a, it's Tiavana, Tiavana, Tiavana. I don't know, Tijuana. I know that's where you get marijuana. 